Hi there, this is Dr. Maria Heltz here with Basmati.com. <laughs> don't know why it doesn't look like I'm looking at the camera. Uh, and there's Milo in the background, my sidekick. And this week I'm going to get into medicinal uses of rose hips. And so rose hips, I've got some tincturing here. I don't know if you can see that liquid is a really beautiful garnet red. Uh, great medicine and great food. Here are some dried ones. You can often find these in health food stores. Uh, let's see. There we go. Um, you may be lucky enough to have roses in your garden, in which case you can have fresh rose hips. Uh, and so rose hips have a whole uh, variety of medicinal uses as well as food uses. Let me see if I can get myself lined up here. Nope. All right. I'm going to be looking off into the corner. <laughs> Uh, and so in terms of food uses, a great way to go is to either purchase uh, organically produced dried rose hips and you can crush them up as a powder and sprinkle them uh, on various foods. I actually think rose hips go really well on things like white fish. You could also throw them into yogurts, um, smoothies and stuff, stuff like that. You could also make a syrup out of them. So it means you would simmer them uh, in some water for about, you know, 15 minutes or so and strain them. And now you've got a great rose hip syrup. You add a little honey to it uh, and it's a delicious addition to your recipes. You can make salad dressing out of that syrup by mixing it with olive oil and some vinegar. Uh, and why would you eat them? Well, they're very nutritious. They are rich in particular in vitamin C, which is great for keeping your immune system functioning nice and strong and also great for your blood vessels. Uh, many other nutrients as well um, in those hips. And they're chock full of all sorts of antioxidant flavonoids, which are plant pigments. And so you can use them as food I often use them as stronger medicine in my practice. And so either as a tea or as you know, an extract, like I've got going here, or as a powder. And so uh, they are useful for a wide variety of things. And so let me get this thing. I just can't seem to get it. <laughs> Sorry to keep moving it around. I just can't seem to get it so that I'm looking at the camera. Uh, anyway, uh, rose hips are great for the gastrointestinal tract. And so for people that have irritation or inflammation uh, along that track, a, a tea in particular is a great way to use the rose hips. And then also rose hips are great. There goes Milo burying himself in the background. Uh, rose hips are great for us as we're coming into spring allergy season because what we know is that the hips actually reduce histamine secretion by cells of our immune system known as mast cells. And so mast cells release histamine and other inflammatory chemicals. And this is part of our immune response when we are having an allergy. And it's the reason why we blow up and our eyes get weepy and we start sneezing and our face may get puffy and itchy and such. And so, um, you know, some level of histamine has an important role in the body, but when we're having a, an allergic response to things like, you know, pollens and such that may be happening already where you are, it's not fun, uh, it's annoying. And so rose hips can be really great either as a standalone herb or in a blend with other great anti-allergy herbs like chamomile and nettles and reishi mushroom and such. But you can use them by yourself, by, the, by themselves, maybe by yourself too. Uh, so try them as a tea, try the hips as an extract, like I said, uh, and you may have to experiment, but they're really useful for allergy season. Or even if you have uh, allergies to pet dander, Milo, for instance, um, uh, give, them, give them a try. So the, I mentioned already the pigments, the flavonoids and such that rose hips contain, and they are uh, great antioxidants uh, and anti-inflammatory allies that we can use. Uh, I love rose hips in particular for strengthening our blood vessels. And I will 
um, put them in a formula for things like eye health, people that are having eye issues to help strengthen the blood vessels in the eye and help with good blood flow. And so some of the smallest capillaries, some of the smallest blood vessels in our body are in our eyes and they can use a little bit of support. I will use rose hips uh, and you know, herbalists in general will use rose hips for strengthening blood vessels elsewhere in the body as well, so not just in the eyes. So a great vascular tonic to think about using in particular if you uh, really easily get capillary breakage or you bruise really easily. So that's another great use for rose hips. And they taste great. They're always a welcome addition to a formula because they taste wonderful. So you can buy rose hips, as I said, you can get them you know, organically grown and already dried and cleaned. And that's a really easy way to use them. You can harvest your own. And so here where I live in the Rocky Mountains, we've got lots of wild rose in the woods and so lots of rose hips to be found uh, if you have roses in your garden those hips as well are fine and they're huge uh, as opposed to the the wild hip, wild hips that i have near me and when you harvest rose hips you want to do it at a certain time of the year and so you're going to see them growing generally later in the summer uh, but you don't want to harvest them in the summer you want to wait and just let them go until they have been through a couple of good hard freezes. And so in Durango here, that's usually around early October, as we're getting into October, those hips go through a couple of freezes and they will, their texture will change a little bit when you're looking at them. Instead of being solid red, they'll get a little bit crinkly and a little bit kind of translucent looking. You'll just have to trust me and look at them after a freeze. And uh, that's the time you want to harvest them. And it's going to make them a lot easier th to process. Now, it is a bit of work processing rose hips. If you've ever done it, you'll know what I'm talking about. When you break them open, uh, the seeds inside that fruit are covered in hairs, really annoying little hairs, actually, that you don't want to get into your preparation. And so uh, you have to either dry the seeds and winnow them to get rid of those hairs or manually scrape them out if you're wanting to do a, a fresh rose hip preparation. And so uh, it's a little bit of work. It's less of a big deal if you're doing something like tincturing or making a liquid extract out of the hips because you can, when you go to strain that a couple weeks later after mixing with alcohol and water, you can use muslin or cheesecloth, uh, maybe a couple of layers to strain out the seeds and the hairs and then you'll be fine. You, it won't be a problem. Um, but it, you know, it can be tedious to try to get rid of the hairs. So you can cheat and just buy organically grown dried rose hips if you want. But it is great to use the fresh hips. Yeah, of course, if you're harvesting them from your garden, uh, don't use them if you spray any herbicides or pesticides. You don't want that in your food or medicine. Uh, ditto if you're harvesting it from somebody else's garden, hopefully with permission, um, you know, making sure that those roses are not sprayed um, so that you're not getting those nasty chemicals. And then a word on tincturing rose hips. A lot of you may know how to make folk tinctures where you're just throwing your, your plant in a jar, maybe with some vodka or brandy. Rose hips actually do better if you do a little bit more careful preparation. Folk tinctures are great. It's just that um, certain plant parts do better with different amounts of alcohol. So vodka and brandy, we're going to do a little math here, are generally 40% ethanol, 40% alcohol, that's 80 proof. Uh, rose hips will tincture fine in them, but they actually tincture better with less alcohol, less ethanol. And so I like to do about 20 to 25% ethanol or alcohol. So that means diluting your brandy or your vodka in half, cutting it in half um, to do your tincture. If you're doing dried rose hips, that will work. Just get your brandy, um, throw equal parts brandy or vodka in a jar and uh, you know add your rose hips in and you're good to go. If they're fresh rose hips you have to be a little bit careful because here we go once that alcohol level that ethanol level gets below 20 percent you can have mold and bacteria growing in your tincture and because the rose hips themselves will have a little bit of water in them um, if you're just cutting your vodka in half with water throwing it in the jar with your fresh rose hips you may wind up just slightly below the alcohol amount you need so you're going to have to do a little bit of math maybe do let's see uh you know one part 
vodka or brandy and not quite one part water, a little bit less. So an example would be, say you have one cup of vodka or brandy, you've got 40% ethanol there. Um, how much did I say? So if you have a cup of alcohol, brandy or whatever, um, maybe add a little bit less than a cup of water if you're tincturing fresh rose hips. And again, all of this is just to make sure your final ethanol amount, your final alcohol amount is 20% or above. But my whole point here is uh, some plants actually do better with less alcohol. And for rose hips, you will get a really beautiful thick extract if you use less alcohol, if you go to like 20 to 25% ethanol in your prep. So it's gonna require a little bit of math on your part, but it's, it's not as difficult as it may <laughs> sound. And you can avoid all of that difficulty if you just use dried rose hips. You can even dry your own freshly harvested rose hips and then just do one part brandy, one part water or one part vodka, one part water, and you're good to go. Let them go for two weeks. And it'll be a really beautiful, thick, rich extract that you can use for medicine and that you can use for cooking. And so with that, I think I will uh, stop for now. I've given you about four or five great medicinal uses and some great food uses of rose hips. And until next time, be well.